All right, so many of you have very specific worries or questions about how to best ride out this recession. And CNN wants to help ease some of your fears. Josh Lez is joining us now to tell us how. And primarily, folks are talking about the credit crunch and how to get out of it, how to manage it. And they've got questions. They do, yeah. I was looking at some of the ones that already came in. We've been inundated, incredible ones. But we're going to get even more. It. Yeah, we're inviting them right now. I mean, I'll tell you, people have a lot of questions. <laughs> what do you do with all the debt, which makes sense? Because obviously, as you know, lots of people crippled by debt. And what we're doing now is really cool. You can send in your questions right now. I'll show you the graphic. Weekends at CNN.com. Whatever you want to know about dealing with debt, about your credit, your situation. And we, next hour, are going to be talking to an expert about this. All right, let me tell you a little bit about this. Fred, check this out. We have been studying a little bit. And CNN Money, what's been changing in the credit card market? This is part of what we're going to talk about. Four major changes we're going to mention. An end to double cycle billing. No more raising the interest on pre-existing balance. And let's show you the next one. This shows you two more things. All this kicking in July 2010. Payments will now be applied to your higher rate balances first, which is huge. And it'll be an end to the universal default system under which if you default on one credit card, then other, or miss a payment even, the another credit card could then go and raise your interest rate. Big changes coming July 2010. We want to know what you want to know. Weekends at CNN.com. Send us your questions. Talk about your situation a little bit. It can be about credit cards. It can also just be about dealing with debt because we have a great guest coming your way. Scott Bilker, the founder of this. Let's go to it for a second. I'll take you over to the website. DebtSmart.com. There it is. That's his website. He's a real expert on all sorts of situations involving credit and debt. Send us your questions right now. Weekends at CNN.com. Fred, we will then present those to him next hour and uh, we will get some answers for you. Yeah, we look forward to that and look forward to all these emails too because it, it really is at the top of the list of concerns for everybody at this end of the year and then especially as they're trying to build their resolutions for oh, the new yeah. year too. Right, resolutions, good yeah. point. Yes. All right, thanks so much Josh. Thanks, Check sir. back with you, yeah. appreciate it. All right, well worried about your credit card debt? Who isn't these days? Well changes are coming to your bills. What the new credit card changes could mean for you, details in our next hour. Oh, no, this All right, new credit card rules are coming your way. They'll stop random hikes in interest rates. But hold on, the rules don't actually go into effect until 2010. Scott Bilker is the creator of DebtSmart.com, and he's joining us from New York. Also joining us are Josh Lez right here in the studio. But before we get to you, Josh, and all those emails we've been getting in, to you first, Scott. So a few changes, maybe the most glaring change that folks can get most excited about is that credit card companies cannot arbitrarily just change your interest rates like a lot of folks have been experiencing as of late. Yeah, that's right. And, and that is definitely one of the best changes in these rules. But unfortunately, there are still four exceptions to those rules that will allow banks to raise their uh, raise your rates. Well the, the well, the first is they have to disclose off the bat what your rate is going to be. But if, if it, that rate expires, they could say in a year from now it's going to change. They can change the rate at that time. The second one's going to be if it's a variable rate. So if your rate is linked to the prime rate, for example, it's going to change. And the third is that if um, you miss your payment, your minimum payment by 30 days, mm -hmm. then they can also raise your rate. So there, it, it's not like they can't raise your rate anymore. And also they can raise your rate um, on new transactions, but the good news here is they have to give you 45 days notice before they do that. Hmm. So, so I guess the, the key portion of this change is no arbitrarily, you know, changing of your rates. That's a lesson we take from this. Right. There's going to be a lot more disclosure, but they yeah. still have some ways out of that and they can raise your rates. Okay. And again, that's not until 2010. So for the next year, it could still be kind of tight and scary for a lot of us. How about banks and their rates? Might they be able to make some changes uh, without informing us, just mean, like the conditions that you just set? You mean before Bank interest rates? Before 2010? Yeah. Yeah. Well, until then, it's they're still going to be able to do what they've always done, which is raise your rate with penalty rates. Mm -hmm. and, but come and, 2010, then what? Well, the new rules go into effect, and they'll have to abide by these rules. But banks are already, you know, punishing cardholders and people who revolve their balances. Mm -hmm. uh, Chase Bank, for example, I, I get emails about this all the time, especially in this case. Yeah. Chase is charging people $10 a month as a fee if they're revolving their balance. Uh -huh. That's just a brand new fee. And I, I feel that although I like these new changes and they're uh -huh. great for consumers, that they're going to, the banks will just adapt and find new ways to charge us. All right, Scott. And, you know, we're going to have you back within the hour. I want to ask you something about the advantages and disadvantages of all these changes. But for now, let's go to our Josh Lev's here in the newsroom. 
fielding a whole lot of whole emails. Lot. Folks want to know because the majority of Americans are kind of strapped by credit card debt and how to get out of it and what do you do? It's incredible. I mean, billions of dollars in debt in this yeah. country, consumer debt, and a lot of people really feeling it, feeling that kind of pinch big time. And you've been deluging us with these questions. Scott, I'm going to start off with a couple for you right now. Um, this one comes to us from Angela. Is it possible that with a long time to implement this, credit card companies will retaliate? She means basically in advance, raise rates now and act unfair before 2010. And I also want to show you what another person is saying, which is very similar. Did you say this takes effect 2010? What's wrong with now? It looks like an excuse to milk us to the last cent while basically acting as though they're doing something about it. Scott, should people expect some real unfair treatment now before these things take effect? And he's gone after that whole dramatic question. Oh, man. He's well, disappeared. Uh, the well, setup we'll was so, so dramatic. It was he disappeared good. From us. Okay, well, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to repeat that later. We're just going to have to <laughs> replay me saying it, and yeah. then he can answer it. Well, the interesting <laughs> thing here is, you know, folks have a lot of you know, questions about Lisa. what does this mean in the next year? I mean, that's a legitimate question. It's kind of, you know, one of those that I was leaning toward him a mm. moment ago. Okay, what happens in the interim? If 2010, all these right. changes are going to happen and they're to our advantage, consumers, what can happen in the next year? And this is it's really scary. Important. Yeah, I mean, these major, these are huge changes that could really help consumers. But mm -hmm. because they're so long before that, the question is not only what could change, but also will they take advantage of the fact that yeah. they have that time trying to make some money now for what they'll lose later yeah. on. That's what he'll answer for us in Okay, a few well, we're going to consider this a tease. Okay, oh, that was a good tease. That, this is a tease. It was a long tease, These are the questions that people are asking, <laughs> and we're going to have Scott back to answer them. How's He's that? He's probably somewhere yelling at a TV screen right now because he knows the answer. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But somehow his mic was off. All right, oh, thanks, man. Josh. I appreciate it. We'll good. try it again. All right, so we told you earlier about the new credit card rules coming your way, and you still have lots of questions about them. We've been fielding all your emails. Let's bring back the creator of DebtSmart.com, Scott Bilker in New York, and Josh Levs right here in Atlanta. Josh has some questions, but Scott, back to you real quick. So advantages, disadvantages of all these changes, how do you see it quickly? I see it overall as positive for the consumer. and they're, they're Yes, definitely, because all these changes are definitely going to make us more aware and give us a chance to pay our, back our debt more quickly. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the changes is allocation of payments. What banks are doing now is when you send in your payment, they apply it to your lowest rates first, mm -hmm. effectively locking in any yeah, balance you have at a high forever. rate. Exactly. Now they're going to have to apply some of that to the higher rate higher interest rate bounces, okay. but they don't have to apply all of it to the highest interest yeah. rate bounces. Sadly, we got to get through a whole year before all that good stuff happens, though, Scott. All right, so Josh Lev's taking in the emails. We're going to try this again. We're going to try it again. <laughs> we got a lot of questions from yeah. the emailers. Yeah, exactly. I want to bang right into it. Scott, you are here, right? Say something uh, to me. I am here. Yes! <laughs> Score! Okay, I'm going to give you the short version of what's going on here. Uh, so many people writing us saying, since this don't take effect till July 2010, right. can't the credit card companies get away with all this stuff right now, raise their rates, kind of penalize us in advance? advance to make up for any money they might lose through these new rules. I think to some degree that may be true, but I don't know oh. if it's going to penalize us in advance, but I think what they're going to do is start to strategize ways to incorporate the new fees over this time. I mean, they've been doing these things for years, charging us fees and default rates, some rates as high as over 30%. <gasps> Oh my goodness! Oh my In default that rates. Is cruel. That so really, criminal. pathetically, this actually could happen. There could be some of that. Let well, they're, they're go just ahead. going to continue to do what they've been doing okay. now and, until then. But Keep I think they're going to find new ways to charge us new All fees. Right. We got a lot of emails. I want to get to another one because this is also symbolic of what a lot of people are writing to us. This one comes to us from Gail Warren, who says basically, you know, we're bailing out banks, and why are we not getting immediate relief from the high credit card? interest rates. You're hearing all this stuff about the mortgage interest rates. Why aren't there some new rules that are laws now that limit the kind of interest rate that these credit card companies can stamp starting right now? Well, that would be great, but you know what? The banks avoided these things a long time ago. It used to be that they were held to the usury laws of each state, but back in 1978, the Supreme Court ruled that the state in which the banks are headquartered is the rate that they can rate, you know, is depending on the rate. That's why all your banks have moved to South Dakota and Delaware, because those states made it more favorable for the banks. Okay. So the rates are high in those areas. Scott, I want to toss in one more here, then back to Fred. This one's interesting to me because it's an angle you don't hear about. Billy Joe writes us, hey, was the mm. government going to impose a law on how many credit cards a person can buy, can, can pick up? Because don't forget, he says people's irresponsibility with ordering credit cards has helped get us into this mess in the first mm. place. No doubt that consumer debt people have taken on is part of the problem. Should there be a law? Will there be a law? I don't think there's going to be a law about how many credit cards you can have. And it's true that personal responsibility plays a big part. But the banks aren't innocent here because they're the ones that are trying to get everyone to use their credit, sending out uh, letters that entice people to take advantage of 
credit that they won't be able to pay back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always in the big print, you know, go on a vacation, buy a new grill. But you never get a letter that says you better pay more towards your credit card debt because you might be in debt forever. That's oh interesting. Scott, thanks for that. Yes, it's scary stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. depressing, too. It is. It's depressing. I've got to be frank on that. You just got to hold out hope that in July 2010, things won't get too bad by then so that these new rules will actually start to clean up the mess. Yeah. All right. Hope. Scott Bilker, thanks so much. And thanks to you for all the emails that you've been sending our way. And Josh, thanks so much for fielding them all. Thanks, My pleasure. <laughs> all thanks right. for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. All right. Well, a lot of folks are grimacing over credit card debt and the economy, but then there's the flip side. A lot of folks are really excited about what's to come during inauguration.